Hi guys, welcome to this episode of Twin Magnet Production. I remain your host, Maraj. Kindly subscribe if you're not yet a subscriber. Turn on your notification button, click the like button and leave a comment. We would love to hear from you. On this episode, we're going to be looking at our usual relationship tips. And today we're looking at money. Yes, money is an unedictable evil, like some people will say. And money is something you need. Everybody needs money, right? And we need money to make our relationship grow. And we need money for us to succeed in everything we do. And money has been one of the reasons why so many people want to divorce, say enough is enough, they can't continue. And money has been another reason why people enjoy their relationship. We're looking at how, do you ma how to manage money in order to succeed in your relationship and we're going to be looking at some tips to help us do that you know most times when people get into marriage they tend not to understand their financial current financial status they over exaggerate or they over estimate their financial worth and as a result most times they enter they fall into kill there's always problems here and there they live above their standard and that has always not gone down well that has not always been a challenge with so many people so today we're looking at what are the things you need to do in order to manage your money properly in order to have a successful relationship and have your finances on the check first of all before you think of any spending before you plan your budget you have to understand your current financial worth know where you're coming from know what your earnings are your monthly income if you have streams of income you have like multiple means of income you have to understand how much comes from what monthly this will help you plan strategically and help you take other financial decisions as regards to your relationship this takes me to the second one which is have a realistic budget a lot of people tend to over exaggerate in their budget you know this is the amount you earn monthly this will help you plan after you've paid your tithes after you've done um that's if you're the type that have so seeds if you're the type that do some certain kinds of giving like giving to the orphanage after you've done all these then you plan based on what you have and when i say based on what you have is based on what you're willing to spend for the month when you plan based on what you're willing to spend for the month you don't exceed that when you're done with that you know that for that month it's closed any other expenses can wait to the next month so understanding your financial status planning having a realistic budget is key to succeeding financially another one i want you to look at stay free from every form of debt a lot of people before their income comes that's for the salary earners before they get their money it's already spent out you see they collect this collect that and when the money is coming it's used to settle debt at the end of the day they have nothing to fall back on and that has never been good trust me if you're the type that lives on debt you will hardly have anything tangible with you so try as much as possible to stay free from every form of debt. And if you're already in debt, try as much as possible to clear it off. Then you can start planning financially. Another one I want us to look at that is also key to succeeding in your marital relationship financially is to practice the habit of savings. Yes, a lot of us tend to do this piggy savings in the house. I don't know how many, I don't know for those it works for that's fine but when i talk about savings no matter how tight your budget is always set something aside to save this is very important so at the end of say a quarter or end of the year you look back and like you go through your savings and see and look at what you've been able to put aside set aside from your earnings your month-to-month -month earnings this is very key because most times when you need to take major financial decisions like you need to acquire a property you need to take a course this is where you fall back on so having a savings or having practicing the lifestyle of savings is key to succeeding in your financial journey another one i want us to look at is practice bulk purchases most people are used to buying okay they want say they want salt they go get a pack of salt they want this they go get the pack of that but some other people will rather take it as in buy it in bulk when they have the money trust me bulk purchases saves a lot and you know when you buy things in bulk it tends to say save you a longer time you know that you're done with that thing you don't bother yourself about that and it saves some certain amount of money Try bulk purchases and thank me later. It has always worked for me. 
this is what I practice and I can tell you comparing both when I wasn't doing bulk purchases and now that I practice it there's a huge difference and it has even saved me much money and something I don't intend living because it has really helped my marital journey. Another one I also want you to look at is set out emergency fund. Trust me, this really helps. It helps big time. A lot of people have like fallen into problems and they're like, you know, most times they tend to go and take from their savings. But if you have an emergency fund set aside, when something comes up, obviously, emergencies will always come. When things like this come up, you know where to go to. You don't tamper with your savings. You don't know this is strictly savings. When it comes to emergency, there's something to handle it. There's set-aside fund to handle it. Another one I want us to practice, so many people are guilty, so many people are guilty of this, is eating out. Yes, eating out most times. Most couples, especially when you just got married, there are no kids yet, you know, the temptation is always there. Ah, oh, honey, pick me up, we'll have lunch. Pick me up, we'll eat out on our way back from office, we'll eat out and all. Trust me, that eating out costs a whole lot, you agree with me. Because a plate of food in a restaurant, in a good restaurant, is about 2000 3000 and all. And considering the amount a plate costs, it's more expensive compared to putting up something, preparing something at home. That I'm talking to the ladies, you can testify to this. Imagine using that same amount. Obviously, you have something to not just to eat at that particular time, something that you can even take again. So trust me, if you're the type that eats out most, the fact remains that you're going to be spending much. And that is not ideal. Considering the way things are now, everything hiking, trust me, you will want to spend extra. Extra expenses is not ideal in your marital journey. You just want to cut everything, cut everything down so you can cope averagely and you define at the end of the day another one i want us to look at is always avoid having unplanned funds i'm guilty of this most times i keep money with me i don't have any specific reasons why i have this money there's a tendency that when i see this i'll be like oh i need this not really need i want this and you know when you want something you go for it provided you have the money but when you see these things and you don't have the money with you you just be like some other time. And that has saved that particular amount of money you would have spent on that thing. And believe you me, even if you don't buy that thing, you will still be fine at the end of the day. So try as much as possible to avoid keeping unplanned funds with you. You can possibly have certain very little amounts that you need to like do one or two things, but don't keep big amount of money that you have no plans for with you. So don't keep any amount of money, not any okay huge amount of money you're not or you didn't plan to spend on any specific thing with you because at the end of the day when this money is all or monies are all spent you won't be able to account for it because you'll be like what did i buy what did i buy i had fifty thousand with me and before you know it with the way things are hiking you don't know what you spent this money on and you're feeling you're probably feeling that you misplaced or you lost money you know you've spent it on things that were not really need, needed at that moment but things you wanted to Another one I want us to look at, which is the last one, is have multiple streams of income. That thing works magic. For those of you that are salary earners, you can set aside a business or something, something that just brings in money, no matter how little, at the end of the month or at the end of the week or even daily, no matter how little it is, something comes in. Trust me, that will handle a certain project in your marital journey or that will be help to, will be used to sort out something. But having only or falling back on your salary alone at the end of the month is not really ideal. If you can, and I believe you can, no matter what you end monthly, set aside something and start up another business or whatever so you have multiple streams of income. This will always help. This has always helped and is still helping. So today we've come to the end of our relationship tips on how to stay afloat in your relationship financially. But before I draw the curtain on this one, I want us to run through what we said. First of all, I talked about understanding your current financial status. I also talked about staying away from debt. 
I also talked about having multiple streams of income and also setting aside financial emergency fund. And also, I talked about practicing the lifestyle savings. I also talked about bulk purchases. What else, didn't I, what else can't I remember? I think I've run through, right? Yes. So these are all you need to do to cope, to sail smoothly in your financial journey. Please know that money has a spirit. You agree with me. Money has a spirit. And if you let money control you, you remain slave to money. But if you control money, it will run errands for you. So try to be in control of every finances that come your way so you can stay afloat financially. Until I come your way next time, I remain your host, Maraj. Kindly subscribe if you're not yet a subscriber. Turn on your notification button, click the like button, and leave a comment. We would love to hear from you. See you next time.